Good morning. Today I will uh, introduce a homework on uh, semi-definite pro programming (SDP). The homework uh, mainly in MATLAB implement uh, optimization algorithm. Mm. Suppose we have a symmetric matrix A of X which uh, linearly depends on uh, vector x. So x is a vector in Rn, A and B are symmetric matrices, M by M, and uh, calligraphic A is a linear map from uh, vectors to matrices. Then uh, semi-definite problem, problem is to minimize a linear objective function subject to constraint that uh, a of x is uh, positive semi-definite. We are going to solve uh, the semi-definite program with the penalty function method. For this we will introduce a uh, scalar penalty function, function of one variable, which uh, looks in this way. It consists of two branches, quadratic and logarithmic one, which are con connected smoothly up to two derivatives. And uh, here is the expli explicit formula for this penalty function. <coughs> this is quadratic and this is logarithmic part. Uh, th this penalty actually penalizes our argument, uh, uh, enforces on our argument to be positive, penalizes negativity of our argument. And uh, what we are also interested in uh, to build a parametric uh, family of penalty functions of this kind P is a penalty parameter, and uh, one uh, can see that if if one introduces um, uh, uses P greater than one and uh, increases it, uh, the penalty functions will uh, gradually approach so-called ideal penalty. This picture is wrong, sorry. It's in, the, in this way. So, my ideal pe penalty will be zero in my feasible area and uh, will go to infinity when I am uh, um, on the boundary or, or I am outside of my feasible, uh, feasible set. Now we can build a penalty aggregate for our optimization problem. So this is the problem, objective function and constraints. And in penalty aggregate, aggregate we put objective function plus penalty for constraint violation. And our penalty will be trace phi p of a of x. So phi is a scalar function, but we can uh, use it as a matrix function, the same function applied to matrices. What does it mean to uh, apply uh, a function, a scalar function to a matrix? Uh, one can approach it through Taylor exp ex expansion, but we already learned that this is a equivalent uh, of uh, applying uh, this function to, eig to eigenvalues of A. So I um, didn't write here one line in between, but uh, let me tell it. Uh, so I, I should take phi of lambda put in between and this expression will give me phi of a. Then trace phi of a 
uh, will be just uh, sum of uh, uh, sum of phi of lambda i. I suggest you at home to do it independently to show that this uh, this uh, expression and this are equivalent. Actually, hints are in the lecture. And uh, okay, uh, so this is our penalty, and it is rather intuitive. Uh, we say that we we, we have pe penalty which penalizes ne negative values of argument. So we penalize negative values of uh, eigenvalues of A. We say we force eigenvalues to be non-negative. In this way we force A of X to be positive semi-definite. Now, uh, in order to apply optimization algorithms, for example quasi-Newton, to this uh, penalty function, uh, one need to compute the gradient with respect to x. And uh, again, I remain, uh, remind you from our le lectures that uh, for symmetric matrices, gradient of trace of phi of A is uh, just to apply scalar derivative of phi to a matrix A. Actually, here it should be transpose for general matrices, but our matrix is symmetric, so I don't write transpose. So, apply some function to a matrix, again, it's like applied to eigenvalues of this matrix, keeping uh, eigenvector matrices uh, the same as they were in uh, basic decomposition. Actually, we, we, we need a gradient of our penalty with respect to x. So, uh, when uh, a is uh, calligraphic a x minus b, this is a linear map from uh, vectors to symmetric matrices, then uh, we also develop it in uh, the lecture. And you can also do it yourself if you wish. Uh, the formula for gradient is uh, just applying A adjoint to the gradient of our function with respect to A. Okay, after we build penalty aggregate, you can uh, choose some moderate value of P, say P is equal to 1. And uh, minimize it with some conventional uh, method for unconstrained optimization. We know only gradients, so quasi Newton BFGS may be a good method of choice. For very large problems, maybe limited memory BFGS. We minimize our aggregate and then we update to some reasonable accuracy. This is a bit open question what accuracy is reasonable. Uh, then we update <coughs> our penalty parameters and multiply it by 3 or by 10. Uh, then continue optimization and so on until we achieve a reasonably high value of penalty parameter, say uh, 100,000 or mi million. And uh, this will give us approximate solution of the problem. Now, I will ask you to uh, check your solver with some uh, practical example of semi-definite programming problem. And the example is uh, related to linear max matrix approximation. Suppose uh, we have s uh, several matrices, general matrices, V1 uh, till V n, and we like uh, approximate some given matrix V0 with weighted sum of those matrices. So we, we can denote V of x the error matrix, the difference between our approximation and original V0, 
and uh, we might like to minimize operator norm of this error. So what is written here? Operator norm of V. <coughs> Second operator norm. And as we learned in uh, lectures, uh, this problem may be rewritten in uh, equivalent uh, semi-definite programming problem. Uh, minimize a uh, scalar T subject to the matrix is which is written here is positive semi-definite. You see that matrix is symmetric because here is V transpose and here, here is V. So we have an optimization problem in uh, variables x and t. So we may say that our argument of, uh, uh, of the problem is a uh, long ve vector consisting of scalar t and vector x. And uh, in order to solve um, this problem with penalty function method, for, for, for example, we should be able to compute a joint of this uh, linear map. Actually, this um, matrix, this is a matrix which uh, is uh, affinely dependent on our variables t and x. A fine map includes somewhere inside linear map. And uh, to compute, to calculate the gradient of penalty aggregate, we need to be able to find uh, a joint of this linear map. In, o in order to make uh, things easier, I, I, I wrote here some generic problem and suggest you to solve it first. For example, we, we, we have some uh, map which maps from vectors to matrices. Map of this structure, it, it builds block matrix, like in our case, the matrix is block. And uh, every block in uh, our matrix depends linearly on uh, original vector x. And this is definition of Ax. The question is, what is A adjoint? How can I write it? Uh, to derive it, I, I would go for definition of a joint operator. I, I will uh, develop an inner product of my Ax with some uh, uh, arbitrary matrix Y and see whether I can uh, swap uh, in my expressions in the, in the, in the way leaving uh, X uh, separately in the inner products and all other things which work on I will be exactly a joint operator which, which I need. So I, I should explore this equality between the, those two things. And uh, only I should mention one uh, technical detail. Uh, how can I calculate the uh, inner product of this matrix with matrix Y? Uh, let me split y to the blocks of the same size like here. Then uh, what is the inner product of two matrices like we define it usually? Trace of uh, one matrix transpose another. We say also that it's uh, sum of element wise products of elements first and second matrix. If it's so, if it's sum of element wise product of elements, I, I can take the sum by blocks. And this is what exa exactly written here. Sum by blocks, it's uh, uh, scalar products between those blocks, between block uh, A11x and Y11. And this is an expression for scalar product. And uh, what I leave for your 
home consideration to get from this expression another one which will leave x separately on one part of scalar pro product and all others will give you automatically expression for the adjoint operator. And then, after you did this generic work, I suggest you to to apply to your concrete problem and uh, to derive a joint operator for your semi-definite problem. Okay, in summary, what I would ask you to do is uh, first uh, build a general solver for semi-definite pro programming problem given in this form. Uh, such solver that user provides uh, vector C, matrix B, and uh, MATLAB functions which multiply by, which apply mapping A or mapping A adjoint to corresponding vectors or matrices. And now using this solver, uh, create a particular instance of uh, linear matrix approximation problem for n uh, n size of x is 2 or 3 use random matrices of, of your own matrices of your choice and uh, solve it with your solver and also I, I would I would ask you to do the following thing one uh, can uh, think not of minimizing operator norm of V, which might be reasonable for some problems of automatic control and so on, where operator norm of V is important. But in some other problems, uh, Frobenius norm of V may be important. And uh, think about other problem, and this is a uh, third e item of your homework. Think of the problem of mini minimizing over x Frobenius norm V of x Frobenius I can even write squared, it doesn't matter But now you can think that uh, V of x is linear function and uh, here I write square. Actually, what, what is written here is pure quadratic function of x. Then uh, one can uh, equate uh, gradient to, to zero and uh, solve a corresponding linear system of equation and get to solution. And then I uh, suggest you to compare solutions of uh, two and three, two and three, and derive your conclusions. It's it's interesting to see what would be. Uh, opera operator norm of solution provided by this uh, solving uh, corresponding linear system and what would be Frobenius norm of this I would expect uh, this one gives the best uh, the best Frobenius norm and this the best op 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 operator norm of course but it, it would be nice to demonstrate it numerically Okay, so that's all and good luck.